Good morning. Well, over the last uh, five days, I hope I haven't troubled you too much with this vision of armies fighting, powers being released. But the truth is, we are born into a very troubled world. And the world we are born into seems to be deteriorating and getting even worse day by day. It seems that most of the things within our society are beginning to collapse. This may be because, well, civilizations grow, then civilizations disappear again. And it may be, in fact, the end of Western civilization. Or it may be the preparation for the end time. We don't know. We are asked not to even consider it. We're asked quite simply to lift up our eyes to the heavens and know that God is truly in charge. If it is the last times that we are approaching, then almost like Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar, you now he's got all these ships and he can see the French fleet ahead of him, he knows what is coming, he knows a great battle is going to be fought. And he runs up flags onto his masthead in the way that they communicated. And it said quite simply, England expects this day every man to do his duty. Hmm. That was just an earthly battle. I feel, you see, that God is calling at the moment. And that's why I'm emphasizing the power of these names. He's calling to you and he's calling to me. And he's almost running up the flags. And he is saying, the church of God, the body of Christ, expects this day every member to do your duty. To remember who you are. To give up the complacency and to stand firm in the battle. We don't know what is truly going to come. Already rules and regulations have been brought out, which will attack you and attack me. The other day, um, a Christian evangelist speaking in London on the streets was arrested, was arrested quite simply on the grounds of racialism. Why? Because he had said that Jesus proclaimed that there was no other way to God except through him. And they said, this man is proclaiming a racist attack on all those who are not Christians. But that is what Jesus said. That is what he meant. There is only one door doorway to the presence of God. And that is Jesus. But you see, you feel it almost creeping into the church as well. People say, oh, well, you know. We're all going to be nice to each other. We're all going to be kind to each other. We're all going to say nice things about each other. We must never say anything which somehow hurts anybody else. We must not proclaim it in this way. But the truth is we have to stand and say it. We have to stand and say it. We have to stand up in public. We have to stand up amongst our friends. We have to stand amongst our families. We must stand and say, I believe that this is the truth. And if you can't stand what I'm saying, then you're just going to have to reject me because I will not back down from where I stand. I will not do it in any other way. I remember, and this is a, a personal thing again. I like to throw personal things in now and again. I think it might show people what it's all about. I went to a parish called Betus outside Newport and I, I needed to make contact with people. I felt I wasn't making contact. So I went to the local uh, licensee in a the local pub called the Nightingale and I said, can I have a job here on Saturday night? He said, what type of job? I said, behind the bar. He said, you really want to work? Yes, I said, I want to work behind the bar. And for a couple of years, I worked behind the bar in the Nightingale. And when I was there, I got to know the men who were coming in and in the bar. I had there some strange experiences there, and I remember them. A lot of people were converted on Saturday night, but hardly, very few of them ever turned up on Sunday. You know, 
that we had a marvellous experience of getting to know the men. And I would tell, tell them jokes, and they would tell me jokes. And I remember, you know, I'd walk down the street, and whereas before, as I walked down the street, I'd see people coming up towards me. They'd cross the street because they didn't want to meet me. Now, in a sense, they cross the street to tell me the latest joke. It was a very strange experience. And then I was baptised in the Spirit. And I was away for some time. And I came back and I went into the bar and the men gathered around and said, Hi, Roy, where have you been? What have you, what have you been doing? So I told them. And as I told them, I suddenly realised the group I was talking to became less and less and less. Until I thought, and he thought, where's every gun? You see, the, the, the previous Roy, who was just one of the men, even though he was the local vicar as well, well, they could get on with him. But the Roy who was not doing that, ah, that was a different thing altogether. And I'd always remember it, and I've always seen it, that somehow if you make this stand, there'll be a price to pay. But I believe at this moment it's a price that God is asking of you and that he's asking of me as well. Amen.